Welcome PCS members and also welcome participants of the advanced study group. Today our PCS IBS seminar is a part of the activities of advanced study group on computational study on strongly correlated low dimensional magnetic systems. And our speaker today is Dr. Bumseok Kim from Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology. Our scientific host uh, today is the convener of the advanced study group, Professor Chang Jong Kang from Chungnan National University. And I invite our scientific host to introduce our speaker. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, today's speaker is Dr. Bumseok Kim from UNIST. Uh, let me introduce uh, him uh, with it to you. So he got a PhD degree in uh, two, uh, 2023. And today's topic is exploring light induced phenomena within the frame of authentic functional theory. Welcome, the speaker. Thank you for the nice introduction and thanks for the pictures. Hello, my name is Sonzo Kim. Uh, currently, I'm postdoc at UNIS. And it is very big honor to present my research here. Actually, I was born in Daejeon, this city, and I have grown up until high school, and I moved to Ulsan. So if you want to visit the Ulsan, it is very famous with the ocean side. So it is very big uh, pleasure to see Korea side by side. So today I'm going to talk about exploring light in this phenomena within the framework of, of density functional theory and real time density functional theory. Uh, here is the outline of my presentation today. Uh, first, I will introduce the various experimentally observed light matter interaction, uh, especially light driven phenomena. And to explain these experimental findings, uh, I will suggest density functional theory and time dependent density functional theory will be effectively way to describe this light-driven phenomena. And following that, I will introduce two phenomena, bulk photovoltaic effect and circular photogalvanic effect. After that, I concluding my talk. Let's get started with the introduction. Uh, actually, there are many fascinating light-driven phenomena. First, for example, in terms of electronic structure point of view, when light comes in the system, photon will make the excitation of electron and recombination again. Both process can make the can make the electricity based on the photoelectric effect uh, of Einstein and the luminescence. Not only electronic structure point of view, uh, photon can modify the atomic structure. So this modification of atomic structure can induce the photothermal effect or photochromism. Additionally, uh, photon can investigate the material's intrinsic property. For example, using the circular polarized light, we can see the electronic structure or topology of the materials. So not even measure, we can manipulate the quantum phenomena using the light. For example, in the paraelectric system, paraelectric system, when we shine the terahertz light, we can change to ferroelectric system. So it can generate the quantum phenomena using the light. So with this fascinating phenomena, I focused on these two topics, which is uh, generating electricity using the photon and investigating materials intrinsic property using the light. 
First of all, so I suggest two phenomena here. First one called bulk photovoltaic effect, which is a, a generating photocurrent in the broken inversion symmetric system. When the inversion symmetry is broken, photon absorption as shown the left figure, the valence band charge center and conduction band charge center have a position mismatch. So optical excitation can make the uh, charge center shift. It can make the shift current. So comparing with the conventional PN junction photovoltaics, actually this PN junction photovoltaics cannot overcome the uh, open circuit voltage, but this bulk photovoltaic effect is intrinsic property and when we absorb some light over the band gap, we can generate the over band gap, uh, over band gap uh, voltage. And next one is circular photogalvanic effect. Uh, actually, it is very famous in spintronics or electronics system. So uh, using the circular polarized light, uh, the generating photo current is depending on the spin and belly polar degree of freedom or material system and material intrinsic properties such as very much dipole. So using this circular photogalvanic effect photocurrent, we can uh, distinguish this material's symmetry or intrinsic properties. So in my uh, research, I focus on these two phenomena to generating photo current or measuring uh, materials properties. So actually, uh, uh, experimentally, there are many uh, observations of both photovoltaic effect and circular photogalvanic effect, but there are a lack of theoretical background. Why this have a large or a much of photocurrent generation? And next, in two dimensional or uh, in two dimensional or three dimensional system, we can well define we can define the very capacitive dipole very well. But in low dimensional system, for example, in one D system. We cannot define the very much dipole, so we should uh, define a uh, new quantity related with this con uh, circular photogalvanic effect. So I want to suggest that a theoretical interpretation is required to uh, explain the light matter interaction. For that one, by starting with the quantum anybody Hamiltonian in the Heidelberg picture, so the simplest Hamiltonian can be written as momentum and potential uh, written with field operator. We uh, write down electron electron interaction and electron photon interaction uh, here. Using this Hamiltonian, we can write down the current density with this uh, momentum operator this way. And we can change the field operator to fermion operator quantized by the uh, band index n and uh, crystal momentum k. So we can change from field operator to fermion operator, like second quantization things. We can change the Hamiltonian this way. It is written as a uh, perturbation between electric field and some, some quantity called polarization. So to, ex uh, to explain this Hamiltonian and current density, we, we should get the polarization. So to get this polarization, we can make the correlation function and so the equation motion in Heisenberg picture, we can get the, using the perturbative approach, 
we can get the first order coefficient and second order coefficient. And this coefficient is related with the polarization density and current density directly. So using that relation, we can simplify this way. Uh, so current density in second order, oh, there are two types of uh, second order photocurrent. One is the injection current, which based on to explain the circular photogalvanic effect. And next one is shift current, which is called the mechanism of Berg photovoltaic effect. And last, dielectric constant uh, ex explaining the light absorption rate. So as you can see here, injection current is described by velocity difference and light absorption between the light-handedness and left-handedness. And shift current is described by light absorption between two bands, valence and conduction band, and how much charge center difference the lead one it is described by very connection. And last one, dielectric constant is described by the, the transition between valence and conduction band. So all this quantity is easily get by density functional theory using the transition dipole matrix or Bay connection or velocity difference. So density functional theory is a good approach to describe this second order or the dielectric constants. And also I want to suggest uh, real time dynamics of quantum equation. As actually you can see the, the equation is quantum equation and we have time evolution of time wave function. So using the time uh, quantum charge density and quantum Hamiltonian, we can generate time evolving wave function. And with this time evolving wave function, we can get the expectation value of time dynamics, for example, charge current dynamics or orbital moment dynamics and spin dynamics. So in this uh, scheme, we can induce the light by vector potential this way. So the TDDFT can uh, very effective way to describe the electric field very well. So for whom are familiar with this time-dependent density function theory, I simply explain the phenomena first. Actually, by time-dependent density function theory, we can calculate interatomic charge shift introducing by Hubbard U potential. Actually, we can add Hubbard U potential into this TDDFT. So with this Hubbard U potential, we can calculate how much charge uh, shifts from some atom to the other atom. And next, we can calculate the phonon driven spin dynamics in TMD materials. So when we uh, excite the phonon dynamics to TMD materials, we can see some spin generation in TMD materials. And next, we can see the topological quanta, for example, quantization of Chan number. So we uh, give the electric field to to the material, we can see the whole effect, the real-time dynamics of whole effect by this TDDFT. And next, also by shining optical light, we can see the nonlinear second order of whole effect, something like that. So using this time-dependent density functional theory, we can see now both photovoltaic effects of constant nanotube. So before I started this material, uh, I briefly introduced my introduction. Actually, nowadays, experimental guys uh, measure the shift current using zero bias photocurrent. So they did not uh, give any DC field to some system, just, uh, just measuring the dark, I mean, 
zero bias photocurrent only give the oscillating field and get the photocurrent. And as you can see here, there are many inversion broken system, oxide based bismuth uh, ferrite and um, ferrofuscite halide, and also organic molecular solid. And lastly, tungsten non tube reports highest photocurrent uh, ever experimental observed. So I want to suggest, but they have lack of theoretical background. So I want to suggest why this material has a lot of photocurrent uh, compared with other materials. Oh, sorry, I want to drink some more. So let's get started with symmetry pro uh, properties. From the 2D sh sheet of TMD materials, uh, depending on cutting direction, we can distinguish it, this nanotube as armchair or zigzag. Actually, armchair nanotube, as you can see here, there are mirror symmetry along the chain direction. So it has some, um, uh, <clears throat> it does not broken some symmetry, but zigzag case, it has no mirror symmetry. So we think the zigzag is suitable for calculating the photovoltaic effect. For that one, uh, we calculate the polarization density first. So <clears throat> as you can see here, polarization of the armchair now tube is all negligible or zero, but zigzag now tube has a uh, final polarization along the chain direction. It depends on the symmetry. So we focus on the zigzag now tube of, uh, behind, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, let's investigate the electronic structure and optoelectronic property of this zigzag down tube. As you can see here, when I uh, increase the radius of nanotube, here the electronic structure itself is very similar to each other, except the band gap. I mean, the small radius has small band gap and large radius has large band gap. So, it has similar electronic structure, so the shift current coefficient coming from the band geometry is very similar with uh, regardless of the size of the nanotubes. And uh, to see the details of the shift current of this material, the 1.0 electron volt and 2.2 electron volt has positive and negative numbers. And that's coming from the some plus direction and minus directional current direct, I mean, current can make the unidirectional photocurrent, as you can see, plus, minus. And the response is coming from plus to plus and minus to minus. But interestingly, 1.5 EB, there are very needles of very small uh, photocurrent are generating by this uh, frequency. That's why the plus contribution and minus contribution are canceled out each other. So uh, the interesting point is the shift current is made by how much light absorption plus how much charge center uh, charge center difference make this kind of plus sign and minus sign. So, but this photocurrent is smaller than the experimental value. So, we want to uh, expand this study as double wall nanotube. So as, uh, let's see the electron structure of double wall. As I told before, 
the small radius has small band gap. So near Fermi level, there are inner nanotube and the, the, the far from the Fermi level, there are outer uh, nanotube uh, located. And interestingly here, the, the, the next figure, the light absorption rate actually of single wall nanotube and double wall nanotube is comparable to each other. Uh, just few order difference here, but shift current, as you can see here, single wall nanotube is very negligible in this order, but double wall is 20 times larger uh, value uh, can be made by this double wall. That's why we investigate the why this has the lots, uh, a lot of difference. That's why the world-to-world -world transition from, I mean, inner tube to outer tube, or uh, outer tube to inner tube, or inner tube to outer tube charge transition can make that kind of large transition. Actually, to back up this world-to-world -world charge uh, transition, I made a large nanotube comparable with experimental size and uh, manipulating the distance between outer tube and inner tube. As you can see here, when we increase the radial, I mean, distance between inner tube and outer tube, the shift current uh, value are decreasing here. So the, uh, the, the inner tube and outer tube, word to word distance is very important to uh, get a, I mean, word to word charge shift is very important for making the photocurrent this, in this material. And also, we can make the triple word, as you can see here, uh, uh, in terms of those pedos. The third layer is located more outmost uh, energy. That's why the outer tube has large band gap. And as you can see here, double comparing with double wall and triple wall, their charge, uh, the light absorption and shift current in low energy scale is very similar. The only difference is coming from the, the high energy region here. That's why the outer layer only uh, affects on the high energy because it has large band gap. So with this uh, with uh, this investigation, we can tell that uh, our system is not the model system. It, it, it can be uh, uh, actually it can be interpreted in or so experimental size of nanotube. Uh, I mean, our world-to-world hardship can be important in also experimental size of nanotubes. So, and to uh, increase this world-to-world hardship -world mechanism, uh, we substitute one atom as sulfide to selenium, and here, Janos nanotube can increase the photocurrent about 2.5 times larger. Up to here, we calculate the photocurrent using the perturbation way, and we move on to TDDFD, some real-time time-dependent density function theory calculation. Using this TDDFD, in, we compare TDDFD result and perturbation result in the weak field reason, as you can see here, uh, TDDFT in real-time calculation 
uh, when we shine the 0.9 electron volt and 1.7 electron volt, it occurs a plus some uh, photocurrent occur, and here minus some value photocurrent occur. And comparing the perturbation calculation, 0.5 is plus something, and 1.7 is minus something. So it is well corresponding with the TDDFT and perturbation wave. And also the carrier dynamics. I mean, with this time scale, we can see the charge density time propagation in terms of energy. The valence band and conduction band location is well corresponding with the perturbation uh, band scheme. So we can say that the TDDFT and perturbation theory is well corresponding each other in terms of weak field reason. So we move on to the strong field reason because perturbation cannot see the, part, the strong field. So when we shine the strong field to the system, as you can see the first figure, the, the direction of photocurrent are flipped from the plus to minus. So that's why the in weak field reason, at some gamma point, there are excitation uh, in gamma point, but in strong field reason, by the nonlinear effect, not gamma point, the whole brain long zone has some excitation. So it can generate not only second order photocurrent, but also the higher order, the nonlinear effect for this. Uh, uh, this material. So we see, as you can see here, in weak field reason, lead one, the gamma in, uh, contribution is much larger than the, the non-gamma point. But in strong field reason, the blue one, the gamma point is small, smaller than the, the zone boundary reason. And last one, we want to see the atomic motion. I mean, including with atomic motion, the photocurrent can be enhanced by this atomic motion. That's why the frequency from the 0 0.9 EV can excitate from here to here, which is anti-bonding state between the tungsten and sulfide. So, Excitation from the bonding state to anti-bonding state can make large charge fluctuation, and that's why it makes the large photocurrent here. So he, up to here, I present the bulk photovoltaic effect of Thomson nanotubes, and I move on to the circular photogalvanic effect of the chiral selenium chain case. Before I start the, my research, I want to uh, explain this chiral system's uh, uh, unique properties. Actually, usually some Lashiba system has perpendicular spin texture, as you can see here. So here, the, the some sphere, there are perpendicular spin components are occur, but in the chiral system, it has some radial spin component, which is very distinguished from the uh, original Lashiba system. So by this uh, radial spin texture, it is very easy to manipulate by the longitudinal current or like longitudinal uh, magnetic field. But one problem is um, we cannot explain the circular photogalvanic effect in 1D system because we, don't, we cannot define the very covers dipole in this system. So we want to explain the photo, circular photogalvanic effect in 1D system. So for this one, 
I started with these higher systems, electronic structures. As uh, reported previous, it has radial spin texture and also radial orbital texture. And this spin texture, as you can see here, <clears throat> with spin of coupling case, both orbital and spin has radial component, but without the spin of coupling, without consideration of spin of coupling, only orbital also has the radial the component. So it means radial spin texture is coming from the radial orbital texture combined with the strong spin of the coupling. So in this chiral system, let the interesting radial spin texture is coming from the orbital texture. So we focus on the orbital texture of this material. And I move on to from 3D to 1D to investigate this material more details. As you can see here, uh, along the gamma point, the LZ is radially distributed, as you can see here, and also, also spin are so radially distributed. And what the, 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 this radial distribution is coming from, is actually, interestingly, this material, uh, equidistance between each atom. So, lively thing, it doesn't, uh, it has some inversion symmetry, some, uh, some, I mean, symmetrically, it doesn't break the hopping between A from B to A from, uh, from A to C. But interestingly, in orbital point of view, from A's radial orbital to B's PZ orbital, as from blue one to red one, but in downward, blue one to blue one. So it has a different, uh, I mean, opposite uh, hopping strength between upward and downward. So it makes the like ferroelectric material. I mean, the ordinary ferroelectric material has different orbital hopping between A to B and A to C because of uh, atomic uh, position, but it is not coming from atomic position. It is coming from chiral hopping. I mean, because it has chiral system, it has uh, upward, downward, different orbital hopping, uh, I mean, opposite orbital hopping, so it has orbital angular moment. And also we can see uh, based on the model Hamiltonian, there are three atoms here. And let's assume each uh, atom has three uh, p orbital. And we can make the line by line Hamiltonian with these three bases. So using perturbation, we can see the orbital, each or orbital's projector, and with this OAM operator, we can calculate the LZ is cosine time sign, which means odd function to gamma. So we can see it, it should have radial orbital angular momentum component based on the model Hamiltonian study. And so we know in this material, orbital angular momentum is very important. So we want to describe this orbital angular momentum with the experimental observed component, which called Circular photogalvanic curve. Could you explain the any conventional theory that we only focus on the rational? Yeah. Any difference between the rational and the photogalvanic curve? Ah, I see. So, so you mean 
in uh, Rashiba system, how to... But in this system, we throw Rashiba in the package, we throw input. In, in the JFT configuration, Rashiba and spin Rashiba term and orbital term is fixed together, right? Yes. Your, how, how to distinguish it? Ah. How, how, what, what is your ratio between the two? Ah, I see, I see. Uh, by DFT calculation, actually, we can uh, turn off the LS coupling, right? So we can turn on or turn off the LS coupling. So by this way, we can see only orbital component by turning off the LS coupling. And when we turn on the LS coupling, the small uh, the, the, the splitting from the other band I mean, Here, as you can see here, uh, this band splitting is coming from the LS coupling. So that's uh, point EV, I mean point one or point some EV, but orbital texture has a large number of splitting compared with the spin splitting. So we think orbital is much more large portion of in this material. Thank you for asking. Yeah, so uh, come back to my presentation. Uh, I want to suggest the orbital angular momentum is very important in these materials, but uh, how this orbital angular momentum is uh, linked with the experimental observed uh, quantity. So we suggest the circular photogalvanic effect. So this is uh, well-defined, the circular photogalvanic effect uh, coming from the, this nature physics paper. And they describe the circular photogalvanic uh, effect by velocity difference between two bands and the ratio, I mean, it is described by velocity difference times the helicity light absorption difference. And when we change from the light, I mean, velocity difference part this way, from the light-handedness and the left-handedness this way, we can modify this equation as <clears throat> the light absorption difference between the light circular polarized light and left circular polarized light can be written as the, the, the position x plus minus i y, position y, between two bands. So we can see this V is, can be written as the polarization, I mean, light absorption from RCP square times LCP square. So using this relation, we can change the photocurrent, I mean, circular photocurrent can be described by the angular momentum between two bands. So we can describe, we can, connect the important quantity orbital angular momentum with the photocurrent, which can be observed by experimental guys. So we want to suggest first, in this one dimensional system, we calculate the circular photogalvanic effect. And in one dimensional system, only x, y direction of circular photogalvan as circular polarized light can induce the jet directional photocurrent. And it is linked with the angular momentum jet component. And this coefficient is also, we can, we can investigate in time dependent density function theory. When we give the left circular polarized light and light circular polarized light, with the uh, over band gap frequency, we can see the photocurrent, uh, photocurrent is generating and also orbital angular momentum is generating, which 
link together in here. So using that relation, we can suggest one thing. Uh, if we put this left-handed and right-handed uh, chain with the middle, middle surface, we can make LX and LZ cancel out each other, but LY are surviving. So in this system, when we calculate the orbital angular momentum, the LY component only exists and relate with the LY component, hidden photocard ZZX component, which does not occur in single helical chain. So we can see the hidden uh, photocurrent can be occurred in new symmetric system. So using these things, we can make the boundary uh, system, which composed of left circular polarized light, some domain, and light circular polar, I, I mean, chain, some domain. In this system, the only LY component exists, and this is this LY component are located in the boundary between left-handed and right-handed. And this is this can make the photocurrent, hidden photocurrent this way, which focused on the also domain boundary. So, so does this figure uh, breaking the inverse asymmetry? Uh this uh actually. Actually, it has some mirror plane along the jet x direction, but not for y. I mean, per, I mean, parallel to y direction. So in y direction, it breaks some symmetry. Yeah. Does this domain only contain the MZX error, right? Yes. It looks like a mirror. So MZX mirror plane is uh, denoting by the, this yellow plane? Yeah, yeah. But the chain didn't have any MZX. Uh, uh, this is Z axis, and it is one D uh, chain. The so one is light. I mean, one is left handed and one is right handed. So both handed with uh, same uh, atomic position along Z direction can make this symmetry. No, I mean under under those symmetry L. Turns into the R and R turns into the M. Is it correct? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, we can so, change the original MCS. So you mean uh, if uh, the periodic, this LL L, L, L system? I mean, uh, what I'm saying is that the, the domain structure that you show uh, is this one. Uh, does this domain structure contains the Inversions in the theorem. It depends on the angle. Yeah, right, right. So when we easily break the inversion. Yeah. So we can easily uh, break the inversion symmetry, but some position we can keep the I mean we can keep the MGX mirror plane in this material. Um, we can manually make the MGX. Symmetry. I mean, the MGS plane is uh, equivalent to the domain. Yeah. This, yeah. With some it depends on the angle between this so far out. Right. Right. Chain. Yeah. So we can actually so uh, if you tune the angle of the para chain at some some point. Yeah. You can you can recover the emergence. Yeah. This domain. Right. And so. The circular photogalvanic that goes away, right? Right, yeah. 
So it depends on the system's uh, symmetry or some ang angle, that kind of things. So actually, I want to suggest if we can see this kind of portal curve, we can think, ah, oh, they are there are some boundary state with the these kind of things. So we can uh the, the, the figure of this boundary is uh, kind of uh, optimized. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay. Some optimized structure for generating this photo current, yeah. So, yeah, up to here, I want to wrap up my presentation. So to summarize my presentation, uh, first, I want to introduce a lot of uh, light induced phenomena, and I focus on two topics. One is bulk photovoltaic effect, and the other is circular photogalvanic effect. And there's two phenomena is well described in TDFT and TDDFT. So I calculate both materials by DFT and TDDFT to explain the experimental, not only explain experimental data, but also I suggest new way to exp uh, uh, explain these properties uh, further. So thank you for listening. And I want to acknowledge this uh, work. I thanks to Jung Kim from International University and Kyung Hwa Kim. Now he's in KISS, but he will move on to Yonsei University. And my advisor, Noza Park in UNIST, and Dong Bin Shin, my uh, former member. Now he's professor in KISS. So thank you for listening to my talk. Thank you. Thanks for the nice so, do you have any question or comment? Uh, so, actually, uh, I have uh, one simple question. So, I'm not an expert on the uh, photovoltaic effect, but I was told that uh, some material with the central uh, uh, with the inversion symmetry can generate the uh, yeah. photovoltaic effect, but in your study, you only focus on the material yeah, right. without inversion symmetry. Yeah, right, right. Uh, actually, what you told is maybe photon drag effect. I mean, the light photon can make crystal momentum shift. That can make the shift current something. So that's uh, not... Uh, implemented in my code. I mean, that's somehow, yeah. So I focused on the material intrinsic uh, broken inversion symmetry. See, so it means that your code cannot compute the photo column uh, in the material with inversion symmetry. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I can, but yeah. no response. I, I, I don't include yeah. that photon drag. So, yeah, yeah. For the last topic, you are working the orbital mode, interval mode. Maybe this one or just yes, this one. The next. Yes. So you hit ah, and here, yes. So this is not atomic orbital. Ah, actually, I also calculate the atomic orbital, and it has some atomic orbital also. It's called it coming from orbital texture. I mean, the p from the p so p orbital. So we can see the orbital momentum from atomic orbital also. Uh, it can be as a propagation of orbital. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you. So you're talking about the uh, TMD nanotube in, in the first part. And I, I'm curious that can you can you expect the, the similar uh, in world to world shift current once we uh, stack those single ones? I mean the, the similar effect from the double one. Yeah, I think so. So I tested with the other material, other TMD material. 
And it also have the word to word charge shield also. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is that you just uh, set any uh, so if you, you just make a bundle of the TNT, yeah, yeah, then is it possible to make a, such kind of a word to word? Ah, uh, yeah. Also, I also tested uh, the bundle structure, and it also have the word to word charge shield. So the those uh, photovoltaic effect is uh, larger linear. Ah uh, yeah, in in that case actually, uh, not this much, not this much enhanced, but it is that is enhanced by, uh, uh enhanced by the lattice constant. I mean the, constant, I mean distance between the. Uh, okay. So. Any question? If not, thanks again, the speaker.